All right. Top of the morning to you, lads and lasses. Uh, today we're going to be looking at vectors and vector notation. Uh, commonly, we're going to start calling these. Uh, uh, the problems we're going to work, I kind of like to call hiker in the woods problems. Don't ask me why I started calling them that. It's just the name that kind of got stuck with. And now we all know them by this kind of question. Uh, I also like to call these some of the X and some of the Y problems is also a good name for them. But the key thing is a vector. All right, let's first take a look at the difference between what a vector quantity is and what a scalar quantity is. The word scalar with uh, magnitude. And the only difference is vector, a vector just means something has a magnitude and direction. So there's a difference between these two. Both have magnitudes, but a vector has a direction in there. Some good examples of scalar quantities are things like temperature, uh, energy. You can't have 15 calories due south. Uh, vectors, on the other hand, are things like velocity is a vector. You can be going 20 meters per second north. Uh, Force is a vector. Uh, electric fields. Basically, when you're looking at vectors, anything that can be drawn like this is a vector at this point. So there's your difference between what a vector and a scalar is. Now, if you do notice a vector, I said you have to look at in terms of this. Vectors have components. Vectors have both X and Y components. So when we look at a vector, we look at a vector, velocity even, this vector is going to have two components. This vector has an X component. And this vector would also have a Y component. And there's our two components to this vector. Now this Y component is this component over here. It's the same thing, just drawn over at the angle. Now if you look at this in terms of a triangle, here's your V is your hypotenuse. And if we wanted to find this adjacent side, we'd use cosine. So Vx would be equal to V cosine of theta. So we could use that to find our x and y components of this vector. So let's say, for example, a very basic problem might be something as simple as, grab a fresh sheet of paper. So, you know, we might have a basic problem where you have a vector. First, we'll start out with our, we'll say, crosshairs. And let's say that we do. We could say someone walks, let's say someone walks 50 meters at an angle of 20 degrees. In this case, it'd be north of east. What are the X and Y components of this vector? So are the X and Y components of this vector? All we'd have to do, and we could call this vector A and say that this is your AY component. This is your vector AX component. If I want to find AY, it would be equal to 50 times the sine of 20. AX would be equal to 50 times the cosine of 20. And I could, I don't know why I didn't pick 30. Turn on. So we've got 50 sine 20. 17.1 and then we can go back change that to a cosine and we got 46.9 so this is basically 47 
now notation and you'll actually work a little bit different I'll make a separate video on how to do that type of notation all right let's uh, go ahead and take a look at this is just if you have one vector now let's talk about if you have more than one vector and how you add those together so we can call this like vector addition and this is really when I say hiker in the woods this is what I really mean by true hiker in the woods what do you do if you work do if you work a problem that has multiple vectors like let's say in this problem you have a here at some angle we can call this 40 degrees and let's say that this and this is where we'll say a hike in the woods they walk in the woods for two miles sorry I'm writing so small they walk in the woods for two miles an angle of 40 degrees north of east and they're going and they now proceed due south let's say they proceed due south for 3.5 you have more than one vectors this is where we're going to do the sum of the X and sum of the Y so sum of the X is equal to let's add up all our X components vector we could call this vector A and vector B I'm not going to write it down to save clutter but if you want to find your X components we use cosine as long as we're off of the X axis we'll just use cosine that's why I like doing every angle off of X that makes our sum of the X is all cosine and our sum of the Y's will all be sines at that point the only thing that changes if you take an angle off the Y axis is you just switch your cosine and your sine so in this one this first vector's X component would be a positive because it is in a positive direction it would be a positive 2 cosine of 40 the second vector doesn't have an X component it's due south sine 40 the second vector has a Y component matter of fact it's completely in the Y direction so but it's in the negative Y direction so when we write it down we'll write negative 3.5 no sine or cosine required because it's due south equals so now let's sum up these X's and Y's and we'll do some harder ones so we got 2 cosine 40 now what this has done is this at this point 1.5 X negative 2.21 Y this has give us the final X and Y location of this spot so as of right now we know the X and Y coordinates for this spot so what I like to do at this point is this I like to draw a brand new crosshair what we the only thing we're interested in a vector addition problem like, like this is the resultant of these vectors what are these vectors added together now in like a trig class they'll get you a ruler and protractor and you can do this graphically we're going to do it strictly based on its components this would be a component method so what we've got and what we've just found is this we've got a positive one and a half X component to this final so we'll go 1.5 X and we've got a negative 2.21 Y component so we'll go down 2.21 in the Y direction and what we're interested in is this final resultant so what is the resultant and let's go ahead and find the angle of that too what is the resultant and the angle of those two vectors if you look we've made a nice little triangle all we've got to do the final resultant is Pythagorean R is equal R square is equal to 1.5 square plus I want you to notice something I dropped the negative down here on the 2.21 the only thing the negative really was telling us in this problem was to proceed south so at this point I've already lost it out of the problem 2.21 so we'll plug this in our calculator 1.5 square plus 2.21 square equals 7.1 but that would be for r square so we still need to take a square root of that answer 
So R, the resultant of these two vectors, is 2.67. If we want to find this angle now, to find the angle, I'm going to go with tangent. So uh, solving the equation for theta would be theta equals tan negative 1 opposite over adjacent. This y value is my opposite. The 1 and a half is my adjacent. So I'm going to have tan negative 1 of 2.21 over 1.5. I'm going to put that in my calculator all at once. Shift 10 of 2.21 divided by 1.5. I've got 55.8 degree angle. Now, if I want to put this in true vector notation, I would come back and say my final solution is 2.67 miles at 55.8 degrees, this would be south of east. This would be my final solution to that problem.